Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with, if I could choose only one work by Composer X, it would have to be work T. Well, Composer X is the Italian Alfredo Casella. I think Casella was absolutely the greatest Italian instrumental composer from the first half of the 20th century. I really do. I, I don't think anybody really compares to him. I mean, there were other very good composers. There was Respighi, there was Malapiero, there were, you know, there was Gadini. There were there were there were good ones in there. There really were. But Casella was, I think, the most thoughtful, the most gifted, the most questing, the most evolutionary and interesting of them all. Remember, he began his career. Well, let me give you his dates because I have like a whole pile of Casella stuff sitting here in my shelf. So that makes life easy. His dates were 1883 to 1947. Now, like most composers from that period, let's see if I can put this away, um, his music was, was basically sidelined because of his relationship to the fascist regime in Italy at that time. That doesn't mean like a lot of the people of the German regime that they were necessarily fascists or they were necessarily Nazis or whatever. It just meant that they they made their accommodations and that counted against them. Um, it really has. And I understand that. I mean, perhaps it should count against them. But at the end of the day, ultimately, when they're dead and gone, um, we need to evaluate the quality of the music that they left us. And Casella was really one heck of a composer. And the difficulty in choosing a single work to represent him as typical is that his style was, was extremely evolutionary. He began life as a dyed-in-the-wool, hot and heavy, fin de siècle romantic. I mean, he was but a, a an avant-garde romantic. I mean, his he was he was head over heels in love with Mahler's music. He arranged the first performance of the Second Symphony in France. He made the piano score of the Seventh Symphony. Mahler found him his publisher, put him in touch with Universal Edition, um, and they were quite close. Casella's first two symphonies are in that you know everything but the kitchen sink Mahlerian style. So we can't choose those. I mean, we particularly can't choose those because the second symphony uses bits of the first, which he kind of disowned. They've all been recorded. They're fun to listen to. I mean, they're just these big, you know, huge romantic effusions. They don't have the, the structural integrity that Mahler always brought to his symphonic writing, but they have all of that, you know, glamorous orchestration and emotional excess. And that's, you know, that says a lot, right? But then he sort of cooled, not on Mahler the person, but on Mahler's style. And he became something of a neoclassicist, but there was a long transitional process where he wrote works such as his violin concerto and other pieces where he's, he's slowly giving up that late romantic, you know, decadent style and turning to a more Stravinsky and, you know, and a lot of Italians were doing it, let's face it. I mean... Respighi did the ancient airs and dances before Respighi did Pulcinella. I mean, it was it was in the air. I mean, you know, I mean, before Stravinsky did Pulcinella, right? Is that what I said? Respighi did the ancient airs and dances before Stravinsky did Pulcinella. Whatever. My point is that you know neoclassicism neoclassicism was coming coming down the pike, and it was coming down the pike in Italy with the rediscovery of the Italian Baroque composers with Vivaldi and, you know, Monteverdi and all these people who, all of these composers were involved in editing and creating editions and, and very, very concerned with the preservation and the performance of early music. So Casella was also part of that. And so that happened. And then eventually um, he, he settled on a, a neoclassical style without giving up elements, I think, of the romantic color and flavor and, and emotional I excitement that, that, you know, that, that music has, the immediacy, the affect, the willingness to, to be melodic, to be entrancing, to be, uh, you know, just, just to let it all hang out. There is a third symphony, which he simply called Sinfonia, which is a major work, an important work. He wrote it for the Chicago Symphony, I believe, um, which I think is an important piece. But my choice for a single Casella work is one I've spoken about recently here. It's his Concerto for Orchestra, which is absolutely glorious. And I think it combines everything that he did 
extremely well. It has that Italianate lyricism. It has an amazing central sort of Pasacalia thing with big crashes on the tam-tam, which you got to love. But I mean, that, that has, you know, a real immediacy and, and some gut-wrenching moments, some big, powerful climaxes. It has a joyful finale. Um, it's brilliantly written for the entire orchestra. It's just a great piece, absolutely a great piece. And I think it shows him at his absolute best. It is typical of what his style became, but also where it was and where it wound up. And so uh, that's my pick. I really, really would urge the evil god Cancrazans to let us have all of Cazella because we deserve to be able to hear his progress from beginning to end. We need to be able to understand the evolutionary path on which he trod and to be deprived of that opportunity what I think I think would 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 eliminate a lot of really 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 great music and some very happy hours that we could spend listening. So keep on listening friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.